Good morning, wherever you are in the world. It's always good to be with you. And good morning to my very special friends, Phoebe Francis. Good morning, Phoebe. Good morning, Graham, and good morning, uh, Mohamed. And good morning, Mohamed. Good morning, Phoebe and, and Graham. Good morning to you. So I hope you've had a really good week, and I know that you, both of you, are doing some really good work in helping others uh, change their lives positively. You continue to do that, both of you. Yes, yes. And it's so amazing that you see others moved and in their lives by the mere connection that you have with them, regardless of the shape and form of that connection. Yeah, wow. Wow. Very good. So having said that to you, and of course I said it genuinely, uh, that I really appreciate the good work that I know that you are doing, I thought that we would today talk with our our viewers, our wonderful audience, about the fifth practice of the Leadership Challenge. And the fifth practice is encourage the heart. So we, we know how valuable encourage the heart is, and we're going to talk about that. And we, I'm going to suggest that we talk about the ways that we can do that and your views on how you believe that encourage the heart has real power for, for a leader in the way he or she leads others. So, Phoebe, what do you what just broadly? What do you think about this fifth practice of encourage the heart? I, I think that is one of the core and uh, which had an impact in my life. Thinking back, I, I, I'm going back to my grade twelve days in my. Uh, just a couple of years. student period. A couple of years ago. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember, you know, I, I had a challenge with mathematics. I was not performing well. And, uh, you know, um, the faculty member asked me, please call your parent next day when you are coming and let, let me have a, a discussion with him. And I, I remember my father, uh, I informed my father and he came and uh, we had a discussion with the faculty member and uh, this is what he said, Phoebe, you can do that, don't worry, this is this is okay, you can do it better. And you know that, that the power of that words was encouraging and actually uh, I still remember it vividly because you know those words are still telling me, Phoebe, you can do that. You can do that. Yeah. And uh, that's that's the <laughs> encouragement from the heart, which I still experience it. So, really good, really good. Mohammed, what about you? What does encourage the heart mean to you in simple terms? Um, well, to me, it's about removing the doubt. Um, we are living in a time where self-doubt has grown exponentially. And... Um, Maybe you were in a limited circle before, but now when you compare yourself not only to your colleagues, and comparison is the poison, of course, of this era, but to a larger circle of people you, you see online, you are on LinkedIn, you are, uh, the, the, the global picture has become so uh, visible. So you see yourself as so small uh, compared to those. So the self-doubt, the, the more small you get, in your eyes, the bigger the self-doubt gets. I think there is no better time, more essential time for encouraging the heart than today. Yeah. Now, we can recognize and encourage the heart in so many ways. And it is one of the most important things that a leader can do. And I'll give you a couple of examples along the way of reactions that leaders at a senior level have indicated to me. And one of them, one of them particularly said, Graham, this of the five practices is the one that I have trouble with. Wow. He has trouble giving people around him and the people who work for him as followers, he has trouble telling them that they've done a good job. And years ago, to put another much more extreme uh, uh, twist on this, I suppose, some years ago, I was. this was in Australia, and I was doing a program for a particular 
global consultancy which no longer exists, and some people will pick up who I'm talking about when I say that, it was one of the big ones. And when I was in Adelaide, the, the team in the Adelaide said, we are always told when we do the wrong thing. We are never told when we do the right thing. And a couple of days after that, I was in Brisbane with the same organisation, with the team there, and one gentleman who it turned out was the, the state manager. In the program, I was talking about recognising the good things that people do, and this man said, you don't need to tell people when they've done the right thing. They know that. <laughs> Guess what? When it comes from a leader, that has impact. Right, when you are oh, yeah. by the leader for what you do, even sometimes you might not think you've done a great job. As and Phoebe was concerned in the example he gave that that he was his his um, perhaps his belief in himself was a little bit shaken. And when the teacher said, "Phoebe, you can do this," wow! Now, how do we? You know, someone once someone has said to me. But can, can we do this too often? Can we tell people too often how much we like what they're doing? Well, there are two words that are really critical in the Leadership Challenge program ab about this and how often we can do it. This, these two words are that when we are giving this encouragement of the heart, that it should be meaningful and genuine. When it's meaningful and genuine, there's no restriction in regard to time. But if it's not meaning, oh, I love what you're doing. Oh, I just love you. So good. So good to have you on. <laughs> Meaningless, right? It doesn't have, it's not from the heart. But in simple terms, quite often it's just a matter of saying thank you. Simple terms. And I know a number of leaders that I've worked with say, and others have said to me as the people working for other leaders or managers, that my manager, they might say, stands at the door as we are leaving at the end of the day and says, thank you for what you did today. How hard is that? Wow. 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 That? Right? Just to recognise this. We talked last week about children and the impact of what we, what we are doing as leaders, as fathers and as parents. There's an, an, an analogy or an example I drew in that discussion but let's, let me just say this to you now. You're both fathers. What's the impact on your children or your child when you encourage them? What's the impact? When you say, I know you can do this, or you've just done a great job with it. What's the impact on them? Yeah, and I can say that I see their eyes sparkling when I say something as simple as thank you for doing this in so and so manner i liked this part and um, sometimes if my daughter uh, goes the extra mile and uh, cooks a meal okay uh, I, we all know not every meal a child cooks is perfect but uh, you you don't have to point to the imperfection but to what you liked about it and i actually tell her i like the fact that you are doing something for yourself. And by the way, it's tasty. <laughs> okay. And it, it, the whole world has changed for her. And then and deep inside of my heart, I know that uh, at, uh, with, the, with her parents, she will find all the encouragements. Yeah. I'm just thinking what will happen when she goes to the real world. I hope there are leaders on the other end that will, will also encourage her because yeah. it's not going to be like dad's home anyway. Yeah, but at least with Dad's words have an impact. Phoebe, father. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, that's uh, that's what I was trying. You know, even uh, when in that story which I shared in the beginning, you know, the father said, "Phoebe, you can also do that. Don't worry. It is, it is a matter of fact. Just focus, and you can get through that." And that 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 words, the meaning and depth of that actually have an impact even now. And, and one more thing which I just want to highlight, you know, uh, we, 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 again, this was, I said I was having a cup of tea and, um, and the master who was preparing the tea gave me the glass. And, and then after tasting it, I said, thank you. This is very, very, very tasty. I love it. 
and you can see that smile from him which makes his <laughs> you know th kind of thank you saying thank you without any word so that's something which was also uh, which i like to um, experience imagine that in our workplace i still have a printout of an email from my uh, senior uh, which i still keep as uh, as a, a proud document you know which highlights uh, thank you for doing that thank you for establishing that and and we you know it it when when we see that it is like a certificate of achievement no yeah, so, yeah. so so let's look at some of the ways that that as a leader you can encourage the heart be, but let me drill down the, the how important this is how valuable this is and i often quote this statistic and this is from the research that's been done by the leadership challenge over all these years you guys know the answer to this question, but so often I ask people, what percentage of people say they perform at their best when they are encouraged? What percentage do you think I say to people? You guys know the answer, and I'll give you that answer in a moment. But sometimes people say, oh, it's 90 or it's 80 or it's 98% of people say they perform at their best when they're encouraged. And as I keep saying, as a leader, why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you do this to help bring out the best in their performance? Why? It's so easy. Now, as I said earlier, meaningful and genuine, right? So let's yes. get some of the ways that as a leader you can, you, you can encourage the heart. What sort of things can you do? I mentioned the simple thank you. What else? Yes. Yeah. Phoebe. I am. Um, oh, no, uh, okay, Phoebe. No, no, Mohammed, you, you, you no, no go, go, go ahead, Mohammed, after that. Uh, so for me, uh, I'm, I use one uh, specific way which has worked for me a lot. Maybe that is better than anyone, anything else I know, but I would like to know more. But when, you, when I accentuate the positive, which is already existing, okay? So if you, as a leader... Uh, of course, you can see some good and some positive aspects of the person you are about to encourage, okay? So bring that on to the front and tell them, I always uh, loved the way you craft your reports, okay? So now he, of course, the next report he will be uh, encouraged. Hmm. In what way? Well, I like one, two, three. Can't you just exactly uh, state the good thing that you saw in him, it's enough. It, it will refuel him. Yeah. So w one good way is just tell the truth about what's good already and existing. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Phoebe. Yeah, uh, again, uh, uh, connecting to what Mohammed said, you know, uh, it, it is actually highlighting, um, you know, how you are paying attention to him. Uh, but uh, as, as we have seen in the uh, example which uh, uh, Mohammed shared, you know, what 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 is the good thing so you are paying attention then another aspect is you know uh, how many times as a pe uh, person in positions of authority you are walking around in your office interacting with with your people and it can be saying that okay that 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 was wonderful or uh, it, it can be uh, just encouraging that uh, friends let us give uh, so and so a big hand he has done this today and let us uh, all celebrate this achievement. And that kind of small, small actions can have a, a triggering effect. I, I'm, I'm just remembering uh, in, in a podcast when I heard about, you know, the PepsiCo CEO, Indra Nui. Uh, she was sharing a story in which she goes to her direct reports home. And what she does is she gives a, a letter of appreciation to the parents of her direct reports. Thank you for... Uh, bringing and developing this uh, beautiful person he is helping and he she is helping to achieve this and I, I want to thank you as parents and you know how much that impact that person absolutely and here we are seeing a global multinational ceo taking that time to go and meet yep. uh, that person and the family yep I know one CEO, and there must be others in the US, who, who has a, writes a handwritten note to six employees at the end of every day. His, his assistant brings in this card, okay, right here, and they're genuine. They are genuine. He doesn't just pick a name. They're genuine. So let's just come pull back a little bit 
and, and let's assume for a moment that you are leading a team of 10 people. 10 is a good number. So what sort of things can you do? Yes, when you're walking around and you notice things, sure. When you see someone doing the right thing, pick them up then and say, hey, I just saw what you said to that client or I just heard what you've just done. This is fantastic. Well done. So you can do it that way. Then, of course, there's the, old, the team meetings. We're going to have a team meeting every week or so. Now, in that situation, you can highlight that person. You may even highlight the person to whom you've already had that one-on-one -on -one recognition of what he's done and do it now in front of the team. You might also might have already sent an email, and you mentioned that, Phoebe. You might have sent an email to that person saying, hey, look, I've just had this report about what you've done. This is fantastic. Thank you very much. This represents the true values of what this organisation does, and I want to recognise that. And you can still say that in the team situation. What happens when you, as a leader, highlight these individual examples in front of the team? What happens? Of course, uh, the team, first of all, will uh, wish to be that person. But having done this, not for one single team player, but, you know, you you, you go in a cycle, you keep uh, uh, surfacing, uh, bringing to the surface what each individual does, they know that they are in the company of a high encouraging leader. Yeah. So, of course, they will want to do what brings your attention and makes you recognize them. They will want to do that. Yeah, they know that, that they are in a culture which recognises them for any anybody for anything that they are going to do. Now, here's a little cautionary note, and this goes back many years when I was coaching a woman who said, is a manager, and she said, at every team meeting I always recognise one of the, the team members for something that they've done in the past week. And I have a little hesitation about what she just said. So what do you think that hesitation might be? That's that's a tough one, Graham. Well, it's a hesitation. It's not a negative. But the hesitation is that it's almost like an agenda item. Oh, who this week? Oh, no, nobody. Oh, I'll pick this person because I haven't picked them for a long time. So, that, you know, it's always got to be meaningful and genuine. Otherwise, that person just thinks, oh, he's come down to G for Graham. That's why he's got me. It's a little bit, can be a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but when it is meaningful and genuine to that person, we're going to reduce significantly any likelihood of that person saying, oh, well, it's my turn. Oh, okay. Here's another question that I, that I often ask people. How, how are you going to reward people apart from just saying great job well done that's that's all that's great and that's really really important but so often we have things like bonuses for good work right so how long and i'm not talking about a huge bonus well even that but how long is that bonus remembered by the person who received it Yeah, as long as that bonus uh, is there. I mean, yeah, as long as it's not good. Until it's been spent, right? Yeah. So if the bonus is dinner with your family at a nice restaurant, well, that'll be good. We've had that. It's a nice thing to do, right? But there are other ways. I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm I'm saying that there are other ways that we can recognise people that really touches their heart. Why do we call this encourage the heart? It's not just send out a thank you note or send them off on a holiday for what they've done, but touch the heart. What happens when we touch someone's heart? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, last week when I shared uh, the video, uh, which was uh, for the shots, Mohammed actually gave me a feedback. You know, we, you, you have done a fantastic work. There is a huge, huge improvement. How did you do that? So <laughs> that that was actually very very motivating and touching for me. Thank you, Mohammed. You know. So and uh, and so I shared, Mohammed. This is the platform which I am using. Uh, you try that and see if if it helps. So uh, you, you know, uh, 
that was a real a good example which just came to my mind simple actions to the point uh, guiding me and then uh, how it motivates me to act and uh, work more but it's simple actions which is you know this is what it's in many ways what it's about I, i'm let me just guide you to the point that i want to make and it, and i was thinking about this earlier i want to encourage people everywhere not just to restrict these encouragements to the people who are in your team. I want you to adopt this as a part of your personality, your pers what you are as a human being. Now, I'll give you an example, and I kind of say that because I've been doing this for a long time, it sort of comes... I guess without me thinking about it, and that's what it should happen to all leaders. You should do this when it happens, and it doesn't have to be the person or the people you are leading. Uh, and let me just give you this quick one that comes to mind. I was on a flight. It was an Emirates flight from Uganda uh, back to Dubai. Uh, yes, I was in business class, and I was noticing one of the flight attendants as she walked around the, taking people's orders or doing what she was doing. And I was noticing her engagement every time she she connected with the passenger. Her face lit up, it seemed, to, in, to me, and she was really enjoying what she was doing. So when she came to me and she started the conversation, I said, you mind if I say something first? Oh, really? I said, I've been watching you go around the, the cabin. I said, you obviously love what you're doing. And she said, oh. Mm -hmm. She said, well, I, I don't know that I love what I'm doing, but I just love helping these people who are passengers. And I said, wow, that's fantastic. You know what she then said to me? You have just made my day. So here's my point. We, all of us, can make someone else's day as we interact with people who may well be strangers to us, genuinely recognising what they do. It could be the checkout person at the supermarket. It could be someone who opens the door. It could be... Whatever. You know, in here's, here's another example that I give when I talk about opening the door. I say to people, when you're walking into your office and you're going past the security guard, this is I'm giving examples of how we can do this broadly. When you're walking past the security guard and he sits there, or usually it's a he and he's watching Kabeel come in, and there's not a lot of conversation. Quite often. He might if he smiles at you, that's where we're headed. And if he smiles at you, I want you to say this. Not every day, of course. But I want you to say, you know, I just want to say, I'd say his name is Abdul. Abdul, every morning I come in and you smile as I walk past. And that absolutely is a great start for my day. How is a security guard going to feel <coughs> when someone says that? He might. Yeah, it, it, it. It job. makes him the happiest person at that moment, and uh, you can expect it to, <laughs> Have that you, he remembers you. Absolutely. Have you touched his heart? Yes, you have. Yeah. You're not walking past and saying, I'm going to give you 50 dirhams because I think you're doing a great job. No, you're touching his heart, and he's going to remember that. And we can do this with people that we interact with on a daily basis, whether we're at work or not, but it's important that we do it for the people who we're working with. Let me give you another example in terms of my, I, I know my talk about, as I, we, we did earlier, about the bonus that might be given and how, how long is that remembered for? Well, until it's spent. But I had experience now about five years ago where I, was back in Australia, and it turned out at the time that someone that I had used to work for me passed away, and it was suggested that I come to the memorial service, and I, in fact, was asked to speak at the memorial service. These are people who used to work with me and for me quite some time ago. So when the service had finished, two gentlemen came up to me. I will admit, because of the passage of time, one of them particularly, I would not have remembered he had changed so much. But he was the one who very soon after we began the conversation said, Graham, I still remember, I still have rather, I still have the memos. Some of us can remember what a memo was. That is physical, the physical hand, a written note. I still have the mem memos that you sent to me 
By the way, he said memos, not just memo. Memos that you sent to me telling me of the good work that I had done and saying thank you to me. And I said, wow, thank you so much. And it really hit me the next day what a gift he had given me. Had I remembered that I'd given him, sent him these notes? Of course not. I didn't remember. But if I sent them to him, I would have sent them to others as well. But the other really, power, I think, strong point in this, as I say, it touches the heart. When, when, and you can touch people's hearts. The memos that he's talking about, I would have sent to him over 30 years ago, maybe 35 years ago. And it was one of the first things that he remembered when he came to talk to me. So he must have been sitting there watching me and thinking, wow, Graham sent me the, I must tell him that. What a gift he gave to me. He then touched my heart because he was telling me what I had done. So for mm. all, remember, the handwritten note is a million dollars to the people that you are handing it to. Well, maybe not a million, maybe five hundred thousand. <laughs> it's it's just so it's it's just so powerful. Handwritten notes carry great great effect. You can't, by the way, mm. you can't delegate encourage the heart. You can't say to your assistant, "Oh, would you go and tell him I think he's doing a great job?" Well, you can, but it is much much more powerful when you do it. When the CEO of PepsiCo, as 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 Muhammad said, uh, sorry, as Phoebe said, goes to the home of that person. How powerful is that? So you as a leader have the ability to have people going, wow, I've been recognised for what I've done. I know that when I do something that's really, really good, I'm going to be recognised, not just with the power, the, pay, the packet that I get, but the fact that I'm, I'm appreciated for the things that I do. Muhammad. I, 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 I love this story. and. Uh... Uh, I am noticing also that you have a reverse memo. Uh, what he so said to you in that memorial, you are memorizing, uh, I mean, for the rest of your life. And you just took out another memo from him and shared with us. So when you encourage people's heart and touch them, they will, and they tell you how much this acted, uh, you know, uh, and uh, affected you, uh, guess what happens to you? It becomes a chain reaction and it's contagious. Wow, thank uh, you. This is my wallet, my old wallet, but I keep carrying my old wallet. I use just electronic. Uh, but uh, in 2019, I was doing a program in Sh Sri Lanka and one of the audience ladies uh, came to me and said, I was totally transformed. I now decided I know what I want to do with my life, etc. And she mentioned it. But before I flew back to Bahrain, she wrote a letter to me. That's the red memo. And she made sure she writes it in silver, um, silver ink. I still have it in my pocket. So we all need encouragement, uh, whether we, from the people we encourage or vice versa. It's um, something you cannot forget. And Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you did. People for will forget what you said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Yes, yes. And I, I also say it this way. Be aware of the, sometimes, be aware of the footprints that you leave in the sand. Uh, be aware of, of the impact, in other words, the impact that you can have on others, particularly those people that you're working with on a daily basis. And when you, when they are recognised, you know, even if it's a simple thank you, the things that that you are that you are doing and how valuable they are, you know, we, we you, you we all know that Jim Coozers is so so important in our lives in terms of the leadership challenge and the work that he's done. I'm in, I'm in so pleased and honoured that I have interactions with Jim. Um, well, often shall we say. And every time in every email from him, there is something really positive that stands out. He is absolutely living living this all the time. He's not making it up. That's what he's like. And I encourage people to, to make this a part of your behaviour, that you recognise what people are doing for you. Don't just assume that that checkout operator is, is doing their job. And if someone pushes back and says, oh, I'm just doing my job, no, the way you did it was this and this. This is fantastic. So 
encouraging the heart is so important. And people, as you said from my Angelo, people remember that. Phoebe's story of remembering when he was a in, in high school, year 12 or less, or you know, remembers that. There are things that have happened in my life when, like the, the example of those memos, that you remember. And I, as I say, it was a gift that he gave to me because he, as, as you said, Marmody, it came back to me by him telling me that. Absolutely. And I learned something beautiful today from what you said. When you practice this outside uh, the realm of your professional workplace, etc., and you do it with the janitor when you reach home, or with anyone that you shop, uh, the cashier you shop uh, from, uh, guess what happens? It becomes a habit outside your uh, work to the degree you cannot ignore that. I mean, subconsciously, you will do it automatically when you're back to your team because you have just done it to the janitor. You told, you en encouraged your wife, you encouraged your kid. So yeah. you will not miss doing that back at work. So make that a habit, small things, small, small acts, and it becomes a habit. Absolutely. And here's the point here. When you see their reaction when you do this, when you see that person's reaction, particularly if it's someone that, that's, that's not on your team, but when you see their reaction, that becomes memorable for you and encourages you to do it again. Exactly, yeah. Really good. Gentlemen, I always enjoy the, the insights that you share with us, and it is always my honour to be working with you and for, with all the experience that uh, and wisdom that you bring to this program. And I know we're going to continue to do this for a long time because there's a message we've got to convey the world needs more leaders, and I really know that we are on a journey to help people become better leaders around the world. So thank you, both of you, for what you are doing and what we are doing to create better leaders around the world. And, gentlemen, I thank you for your contribution and for this discussion today. Have a great week, both of you. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you. Phoebe, Phoebe has something to say to our audience. Phoebe? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mama. I want to thank Graham and uh, for bringing us all together and, and making this uh, happy and appreciating and um, uh, uh, encouraging us in everyday action. So thank you. And yes, the audience also, we want you to start encouraging the person you see next after you uh, are done with watching this video and also let us know how you did it we want to know more uh, about what's happening we will be very much encouraged when absolutely. we hear from you doing that <laughs> absolutely thank you both for those comments to wrap this up thank you so much and we will be back again next week and along the whales thank you have a great week